Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3 to 5. Say, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and every hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places plain. That is, the mountain shall crumble, the hill shall collapse. Crooked things made straight, rough places made plain. When that has happened, then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Somebody shout the Lord and say amen. I am speaking on the barrier breaker. The barrier breaker. Our aim is to know the barrier breaking power of the Almighty. And our second objective is to understand keys to barrier breaking. Knowing the barrier breaking power of God and understanding key. And I'm going to say four things by way of introduction and facts. One, the journey of life is associated at one point or the other with barriers or obstacles. Natural. The journey of life is associated at one point or the other with barriers or obstacles and it is natural that is why you don't leave primary school and go straight to the university you write examinations and cross some barriers to step into the secondary school that is why you don't leave secondary school straight every, anywhere you want that is why you don't cross from one level to another anyhow you want that was why the children of Israel did not leave Egypt and find themselves suddenly in Canaan. So barriers and obstacles are not strange to life. It's not unique to anybody. Now why is my own life experiencing this kind of obstacle? Why should I experience such a barrier? Not strange. Second, barriers or obstacles exist to prevent access to destiny or the fullness of glory. They exist to attempt to prevent people's access to their destiny. Or the fullness of glory. Thirdly, barriers, all right, let me, let, so that I, I don't rush too much. Barriers or obstacles exist to prevent access to destiny or the fullness of glory. You see, he told us in that scripture that when the mountains have been leveled and the hills have been leveled, then all flesh shall see the glory of God. So they were standing in the way of God's glory. Thirdly, barriers or obstacles also exist 
as stepping stones to destiny. In one breath, it appears like they want to stop you from reaching where you are going. But if you persist, then they assist you to reach destiny. When Goliath came, it was an obstacle. But that obstacle became a stepping stone for David to reach his destiny. And I see somebody reaching his destiny here today. Something the devil meant for evil is about to turn out for good for somebody. If you are that person, your amen will be the loudest. If you are that person, you will shout the loudest. Amen. Fourthly, barriers and obstacles are both breakable and surmountable. Barriers and obstacles are both breakable and surmountable. There is no unbreakable barrier under heaven. And there is not an insurmountable obstacle under heaven. Barriers and obstacles are both breakable, surmountable. Be it a barrier to your career, your destiny, your spiritual, your ministry, whatever it is. They are breakable and surmountable. And number five, our God is the barrier breaker, ocean divider, obstacle destroyer. He is the barrier breaker, the ocean divider, the obstacle destroyer. We have a God who is the barrier breaker, the ocean divider, the obstacle de destroyer. His name is El Shaddai, Elohim, El Lion, El Gibor, Jehovah Mekadesh, Jehovah Keren Yesha, Jehovah Olam Ore, Adon Adonai, Jehovah Gadigalagabagadagalaya. You, uh, you believe that your God is the barrier breaker, the ocean divider, the obstacle destroyer. Shout the loudest, Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Do we have any examples in scripture that our God is the barrier breaker, the ocean divider, the obstacle destroyer? Yes, I'll give you four examples. Number one. The parting of the Red Sea. The Red Sea was a barrier between the children of Israel and where God was taking them to. But in Exodus chapter 14 and in verse 21, Exodus chapter 14, verse 21, and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea. To go back by a strong east wind all that night. And made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. Ocean divider. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea. Upon the dry ground. And the waters were a wall unto them. On their right hand. And on their left. Somebody say amen. Say it louder, amen. amen. Let me say two things on this point and then we'll go to the next example. First, this is example number one. A, nothing and nobody stands the way 
of God's plans for his people. Nothing and nobody can stand in the way of God's plan for his people. The Red Sea cannot stand in the way of God's plan for his people. The Pharaoh cannot stand in the way of God's plan for his people. Your lecturer cannot stand in the way of God's plan for your life. Your, your, the witch, the wizard in your father's house cannot stand in the way of God's plan for your life. The government of your nation cannot stand in the way of God's plan for your life. Somebody shout power! Oh, giddy, giddy. Allah, 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 Allah. I am here tonight with a brutal preaching. Let me warn you ahead of time. What I am saying now, he said it to me verbatim. He said, nothing and nobody. Nothing means no thing. <laughs> Nothing and nobody stands in the way of God's plan, of my plan for my people. Nothing and nobody, 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 not in your family, not in your office, not in your school. Nothing and nobody shall power. If you don't hear anything tonight and you walk out of here, you are going to tell every devil you see on the road nothing and nobody can stand in the way of God's plan for my life. Say it me, say nothing and nobody can stand in the way of God's plan for my life. Nothing and nobody can stand in the way of God's plan for the church. Nothing and nobody can stand in the way of God's plan for dunamis. Nothing and nobody can stand in the way of God's plan for Nigeria. Let me tell you number two. <laughs> there is one advantage of closeness to God. It causes you to hear things and see things that makes you stable when others are shaken. I said first that nothing and nobody stands in the way of God's plan for his people. Second, are you ready for this? 1B, those who resist God's plan for God's people never live to tell the story. We couldn't hear from Pharaoh what happened in the Red Sea. 
How we wish that Pharaoh returned to tell us the detail of what happened as he followed into the Red Sea. He was no more alive to tell his story. God delivered the people from him. He followed them into the Red Sea. God divided the Red Sea for his people. You are a stranger, you enter. Those who resist God's plan for God's people never leave to tell their story. That is, those who resist God's plan for God's people, they end up as victims of God's wrath. Let me announce here, with every apostolic and prophetic mantle upon my life, every agent of the devil resisting God's plan for your life, they will never survive to tell their story. Every man, woman, boy, girl, every witch, wizard, occult, resisting God's plan for your life. Every devil resisting God's plan for the church in Nigeria. Every devil resisting God's plan for dunamis as a church. Every agent of the devil, every personality resisting God's plan for the nation of Nigeria. They will never live to tell their story. Strange headache, strange chest pain, strange madness. When you want to find out what happened, it says in the mortuary, can you tell us what really happened? Nobody to tell the story. Somebody shout fire! Shout power! Stand up on your feet. Help me shake the hands of seven people. Tell them they will never live to tell their story. They won't be alive to tell their story. If I stop here, I have already over preached. I have already preached. Any devil who say you should not go where you are meant to go, that says we should not go where we are meant to go, that says us, us, should not go where we are meant to go, they shall be led to rest. your seat the presence of the Lord listen God may appear slow but he is sure the devil may be fast but he is fast to fail hear what I just said. There are times it appears as if God was slow. But he's sure. Slow but sure. The devil may be fast but fast to fail.
Let's go ahead because there are more matters coming. Take your seat. So our first example of the barrier breaking, ocean dividing, obstacle destroying capacity of God is the parting of the Red Sea. Our second example is the parting of the river Jordan. The parting of the river Jordan. In Joshua chapter 3 verse 15 to 16. Agalaborate sefrete kuzana malayadisho. Ngalatan fembondong wandia tatababamis. Ha 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 la <laughs> Toko baba telefiato se petie mo agalanti ati se ke kunga latasi shente wa lapa umana kaya latante keke si shikonka alapanti ika katalashta londo asake mego atonsa pandeno anenka ino lomfemvando ijene kenti ananga ngon don don vi anan zendomfo jean vante an vandeng nanan van jean don vi oh tu o jele fete te kenaka la latati si juata le kite wa tapi o kateli jito pereti ke le fete ke te ke ya jata behold i do a new thing and he shall spring forth shall you not know it say he that made the mind of man can he not think he that created the eye does he not see he that maketh the ear can't he hear he said i see i hear i think i know he said for some who say where is god he said i am I am who I am. I am the indescribable cycle. When you think you have known me, next time you came, you see another angle, you see another position, you see another position. Beyond description, beyond comprehension, ancient of days, ancient but not aged, that is Jehovah. The meaning of all this is, don't be in a hurry to conclude on things. Watch, see. And it will be confirmed that I am. Hey! Hey! Stand on your feet with a clap, with a shout of victory. Hey! Hey! Take your seat. I see the manifestations of the all wise God, the one who cannot be advised or instructed, the one who began the beginning after he concluded the end. So 
though the end does not take him by surprise. The things that surprise man does not surprise him. Because he saw it coming. And he sees where it will end. Somebody say amen. So we look at the pattern of the river Jordan. In Joshua chapter 3 verse 15 and 16. As they, as, and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan. And the feet of the priest that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. For Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of the harvest. That the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon and heaped very far from the city Adam. That is beside Zaretan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea fell and we were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. Hallelujah. What is important about this crossing of the river Jordan is not that the river Jordan divided. Because the Red Sea divided before. So the dividing of a water is not what is strange. But the consistency of the character of the divider. And he wanted me to share two things with you. On that is point, and that is 2A. The easiest way to know what God can do again is to know what he did before. <laughs> the easiest way to know what God can do again is to know what he did before. saw how he divided the, the Red Sea before. The only person that will be shocked and surprised at the division of the river Jordan was the person who was not there when the Red Sea divided. The easiest way to know what God can do in your life again is to rehearse what he did before. You know one reason why Peter was sleeping? When Herod locked him in Acts chapter 12 and he was sleeping between two soldiers and they were about to cut off his head tomorrow and today he was sleeping. Where comes the sleep? Because that was not the first time Peter was in prison and came out. He was in prison before in chapter 5. And an angel brought them out and said, go and stand in the temple and preach the words of this life. I think what brought Peter sleep was the fact that the person who brought him out at first has not died. easiest way to know what God will do for a nation again <laughs> is to find out what he did ay 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 Sila. The easiest way to know what God will do in your family or in your church again is to find out what he did before. I am standing here to announce and to prophesy by the authority and the mantle of God upon my life. God is about to reproduce miracles in your life, in your family, in your community, in your nation, in your marriage. Shout power! Is there anybody sleeping at this kind of time?
that would be a very bad sleep. Stand on your feet and shout power! I am the Lord. I did. So you sons of Jacob. <laughs> you to read it in your Bible. For I am the Lord. I did. So you sons of Jacob. I am not changeable. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. Heaven and earth may pass away. But El Shaddai cannot pass away or change. Even if there is any miracle you heard done on this altar and any testimony you have heard, it is an indication of what God is trying to do in your life. Take your seat. Let's go forward. <laughs> Look at your neighbor, say, He has done it before. Say, he has done it before. He has done it for me before. He will do it for me again. My testimony. And Lord, I receive my You have done it for me before. You have done it for me before. You will do it for me again. You remember God of my testimony. And Lord, and Lord, I receive my name. Hey! Are you ready for the point number two? Very direct. If, if we said the easiest way to know what God can do again is to know what he did before. And then, second, if your Red Sea could not stop you, then your Jordan cannot stop you now. If your Red Sea could not stop you then your Jordan cannot stop you now. If the battle of yesterday could not finish you, the battle of today cannot bury you. This may not be for everybody, but I know it is for somebody in particular. If the battle of yesterday in your life, in your family, in your nation could not finish you, God says to you, your battle of today cannot bury you. Shout power. Do you understand? Or you don't want to understand. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you want to understand? <laughs> I beg you to understand. you have ever faced a wicked witch or wizard before and he couldn't finish you the witch of today came too late yeah. Yeah. Ay, 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 is God speaking to somebody here at all if you have ever experienced a wicked personality or agent of darkness and he couldn't finish your destiny, couldn't finish your family, couldn't finish your state, couldn't finish your nation. The one of today came too late.
The only thing you need to know that will supply you the strength to face the Jordan is to remember the Red Sea. And one exciting thing is that Red Sea is always come before Jordan. Goliaths come after lions. So you handle the difficult one first. You always handle the difficult ones first. Whatever you handle today is a child compared to what you have handled before. Somebody shout power. Stand up on your feet and shout the loudest power. Look at somebody by the say, if the battle of yesterday could not finish you, the battle of today cannot bury you. Take your seat. That is the barrier breaker, the ocean divider, the obstacle crusher at work. Our example number three is the crumbling of the Jericho wall. That was a major barrier. The crumbling of the Jericho wall. Phew. In Joshua chapter 6 verse 20. The people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. Is there someone who will shout here today? <laughs> Hallelujah. And it came to pass. When the people heard. The sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout. That the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him. And they took the city. The wall fell down flat. Every obstacle standing before you. Standing before us. Standing before we. In this season, they shall fall down flat. Listen, take your seat. The Jericho Wall, according to ancient history, uh, and, and scripture made it clear that the house of Rehab, the harlot, was on the wall. That's to show you the width of the wall. Now, the wall was massive enough for chariot races to be run on it. They ran race on the wall of Jericho. Chariot races were run on, on, on the wall of Jericho. Some people say 14 chariots. Some people say 14 chariots is the one I've heard the most. They will be running race on the, on the wall. And the wall was so massive. But the Bible said the wall fell flat. Now, if even this, the wall of this, of any, any building went down, at least you have to, to step on the balance of the wall and go. That was not the situation of Jericho wall. It was flat. Where they stood on the, uh, uh, facing the wall, they continued walking straight. And if the wall was wide, if it fell, it would still have height. But it went flat. Lord, what happened? It was pressed down into the earth. God sent some angels. He says, stand on that wall. Do you know the kind of... Um, walls that the glass that come out of the wall or something that come just bam 
right into the earth, level with the earth. And the people went on straight ground. When God told me, what I'm going to do in your land will be like a dream. And I say like a dream, I say it will be fast. It will be easy. It will be sharp. I said like how he said, how long did you think it took the wall of Jericho to be constructed? I said, I don't know. But I had an idea that it took maybe 50 years, maybe 100 years. In those days, they, they built things for 100 years. Then he said, how long did it take for it to collapse? So he told me to tell you tonight and you can sit down and write it down. It is not how old or strong let me phrase it uh, say it the way it is. No enemy structure is too strong or too old to crumble before the power of God. No enemy structure is too old or too strong to crumble before the power of your God. Whether it is a witchcraft installation and occultic establishment Satanic structure, human institutional structures. So the issue is not how long it has lasted or how strong it is, but what is it that is confronting it? Not how long it has lasted, not how strong it is, but what is it that is confronting it? That is the question. Some people say, oh, the problem of my family has been there for long. But the problem of our nation has been there for long. It's not how long, it's not how old, it's not how strong. It's not the strength of the conspiracy. But the strength of the almighty. That is confronting the conspiracy. And second, whatever stands between God's people and their inheritance is doomed for destruction. Whatever stands between God's people and their inheritance is doomed for destruction, marked for demolition. Whatever stands between you and what God plans for your life, that thing has been marked for is doomed for destruction, marked for demolition, has no future. Anything that is standing between a church and the destiny God has for that church is marked for demolition. Anything that is standing between a nation and the purpose of God for that nation is doomed for destruction. Marked for demolition. Does anybody believe in what this person is, this little man is, is preaching? We're meant to have a program somewhere and somebody said over his dead body before we use that venue. The pastor who went there to look for the venue came and said, the, man, the person said, over their dead body. I said, the man didn't say a wrong thing. He didn't, he's not opposing us. He only said he wants to die first. He said that, Magana Yakari, Magana Yakarais. The man 
man is saying, I don't like to attend the program. Also, I don't want to be alive to hear that the program happened. The man died. The program held. Over my dead body is not a bad prayer. Anybody who said over their dead body before you get married, they will die and you shall marry. Everybody who said over their dead body before you and your children become what God wants you to become, they shall die and you shall become it. Stand up on your feet. Ay, 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 as a church, in between your family, our families, and our destiny. Don't lose sleep. There are a people on a suicide mission. It's as if a man spread his hand. In front of a moving train in an attempt to block it. When the train passed, he was not aware that he passed anybody. The train didn't match break. And they couldn't find the pieces of the man. A man working in a big multinational company. One person in his office, big man, told him, he said, over his dead body, or rather, I can't be in this office and see you move to the next level. He traveled all the way from South South, from Paraco to come here. And told me, this is what the man said. So the man said, he can't be here to watch you move to your next level. He is out of the way. The man was meant to be on the interview panel to interview him. Before the interview, bang! He got afflicted, stroke. He was arranged out of sight. He wasn't in his office. Not even in the house, Belete interview board. <laughs> he sent apology to the man from the hospital. The man went forward. I don't think that man is in that office right now. He went forward, went forward since. I like you to know that the word of God is real. Let me officialize the announcement that every man, woman, boy, girl system or structure that is called the Jericho wall that is standing between you and your destiny, standing between us and our destiny as a church, standing between us and our destiny as a nation. I announce they are marked for demolition and they are demolished in this season. They are doomed for destruction and they are destroyed in this season shout power look at your neighbor say don't lose sleep at all don't lose no sleep because of any Jericho wall standing between you 
and your inheritance lose no sleep that wall has no future it is gone Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. For those who were not able to come, either for one reason or the other, what are you doing at home? Action is here. There is action here. Everybody here, can you confirm that there is action here? Finally, the final example of our God as obstacle crusher, road divider, barrier breaker is the opening of the prison door. Let me just speak for Paul and Silas. The opening of the prison door for Paul and Silas. Acts chapter 16 verse 25 and at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed suddenly. What was Paul and Silas's offense? They cast out the devil from a, a little girl who had the spirit of divination. That was their offense. And the outcome of it was their incarceration. At times, the only reason why the devil wants to come against you is your stand for God. Don't keep on asking, what did I do wrong? Many times it is what you did right. Will Paul say, what did I do wrong? No! He delivered a girl, plundered darkness, populated heaven. And then they kept them in the prison. But don't forget what I'm about to tell you. Two things. Number one, no force on earth can keep a person where God has not kept him. No force on earth can keep a man where God has not kept him. Hmm. Especially those who know God. If God has placed you in the cockpit of an aircraft as a pilot, no devil can place you on a motorcycle as an Okada rider. <laughs> that is what I mean. Do you understand? has given you liberty no devil can keep you in captivity that is what it means it is not what a man decided about you that determines your destiny it is what God has decided A man can decide, but it is God that delivers. Do you understand?
understand what I'm saying? They kept them in prison. God said, prison is not your address. Get out. No witch, group of witches or group of occultists can keep you or quarantine you where God has not kept you. Nobody or group of bodies can keep a people, a nation where God has not kept them. Do you understand? Please try and understand. So that in your spirit you can react and say this is not where I belong. I am a giver, not a beggar. I am a lender, not a borrower. I am a wonder, not a wanderer. So that inside you, you can react. Everybody here that they have kept where you are not meant to be. I announce today you are coming out. That amen has a greater potential. Your family is coming out. Your family is coming out. The church is coming out. The nation is coming out. Somebody shout the loudest, Amen. Take your seat. Help me tell someone near you. Say no devil can keep you. Where God has not kept you. No devil can localize you. Where God has not localized you. And if you are in the wrong place. You are coming out tonight. You are coming out now. Shout the loudest amen. You know, what happened to me one day when I read the first time Peter and the apostles were kept in prison. The angel just came, opened the door. That time it was all the apostles. After the man at the beautiful gate was healed and they confronted and said, didn't we tell you not to preach in this name and they bundled all of them into the prison. I'm sure you remember that experience. The angel opened the door. Just open. Their chains loosed. Nothing to say. Go out. And he was addressing Peter. Go and preach the words of this life. They kept you here to silence you. But I release you to open your mouth. Exactly what they say you shouldn't say. Say it. But look at what touched me the most. They were in the temple preaching. They went into the prison. They looked for them. They couldn't find them. The guard said, well, say, the, pre the prison is securely, is securely locked. But we can't find the men. Then another person came and said what I will never forget. He said, the people you kept in prison are in the temple. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men, look at it, 525, the men whom you, as far as you are concerned, prison is where they belong. You kept them in prison, but God kept them in the temple. You think that prison should be their address. God thinks otherwise. Look at your neighbor say, God is thinking otherwise. About your life. The people you have kept in prison, they are in the temple. Somebody say relocation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tonight is the night of somebody's relocation. 
relocating from where the devil kept you to where God wants you relocating from where the devil kept you to where God wants you relocating from where the devil kept you to where God wants you shout the loudest amen Tell three people around you, tell them I am relocating from where the devil kept me to where God kept me. Give the Lord the praise and take your seat. Finally, number two, The king of kings has the key of David that opens and no man shuts and shuts and no one opens. That was Revelation chapter 3 from verse 9. The king of kings has the key of David that opens and no man shuts and shorts and no man open has the key of David 3 7 shut it and no man opens the meaning of that to you is no force on it can lock a child of God out to out of their destiny There is no key, no lock that is strong enough to keep you out of destiny. There is no door locked against you that God can't open. No child of God is permitted to linger before a closed door. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say louder amen. amen. Lift your right and say in the name of Jesus. I am coming out. By the authority of the barrier breaker. By the authority of the obstacle crusher. By the authority of the ocean divider. I am coming out. Somebody say amen. What are the keys to the breaking of barriers? What are the keys? Number one is following God's plan. For one's life. Call it the power of divine purpose. The power of divine plan and purpose. When you are determined and you are decided to follow God's plan for your life. I heard Papa Yedeko said, when you are on track, you cannot be trapped. Follow God's plan and purpose for your life. Why did the Red Sea divide before Israel? Because they were going to where God is leading them to go. Hello? They were going to the land of purpose. They were going to the land of destiny. They were going to God's perfect agenda for them. So no Red Sea could stand between them and the plan of God. If you dash me citizenship anywhere in the world now, except for aesthetic value, here is where I belong. 
have American citizenship or British citizenship or European citizenship, for me, is not a testimony. Because when you are not on track, you can be trapped. The best place to be on earth is not a particular country. It's inside the plan of God. Am I communicating at all? And that plan of God is in everything. Your career. Career choice. Placement. Place, location. Where we are now, you saw it in the revelation in the night. We have big lands everywhere. But he said, go back to where I show you, showed you. When we came to Abuja originally, God told us where to go, including the past. When he said Abuja, I said, we are there. He mentioned the place. And I haven't been there before. So while we were there, it was like planting church in the den of lions. Whatever you see there today is shadow compared to how it was 22 years ago. Because it's a refined place. It was a den of criminals and robbers. That area one there. Every time they are pursuing hardened criminals, they run into the, into, into, into the bush there. God said that is where to go. Am I communicating at all? It's Indian have all manner. Matter of marriage, one voice, one direction, not two, not three, not ten, one. That one is what we are with. We'll be 25 years next month. See how, I didn't say I'm 25 years old. Yes, sir. Moving and the devil is crushing. She's smiling all the time. That is no pretentious smile. There is a limit to pretentious smile. <laughs> Even if you are an actor, there is a limit. Take your seat. Let me give you an example of what it means to be in the will of God or a plan of God. A young lady sent me a text message about three days, two or three days ago. How she was in a relationship. Number one, the relationship was already defiled. Number two, they have broken and reconnected and broken and reconnected. Number three. He said that the man Okay, when the, it was time to marry, they gave the man a bill of 500,000. You know how they give people a bill of uh, bring this, bring that, bring this, bring that. When they gave the man the bill, the man told the woman, he said, your people hate me. <laughs> they hate me. Well, well. Especially that your brother who gave me the bill. He doesn't like me at all. She said, I will try my best and handle the bill. I will try. He said, but none of them should ever cross my house. Everything turbulent. So the lady sent me a test. She said, we have a quarrel, we reconcile, do this and that. Should I go ahead? I'm having trouble mind. I said, I said run for your life. Danger day. Danger day. Anybody know that song they used to sing in those uh, 70s? Fire will burn you. Fire will. Handwriting on the wall is already disastrous. Everything is already wrong. Now the man is warning you. Your brothers, your sister must never cross my... Is there any marriage like that?
Whenever you marry such a marriage, when you encounter Red Sea, you face it by your power. When you encounter the river Jordan, you are on your own. O-Y-O. When you encounter, <laughs> not on your own. When you encounter Jericho war, you collapse it by yourself. Please. Destiny is too delicate to gamble with. Choice of work, choice of place. There are people who pack themselves to America and God didn't send them there. Say green card. Only green card, what of yellow card? Red card. Green card is not green light. Oh, it's possible you can have citizenship and have all the things, which means anytime you want to travel, you don't need to go and look for visa. You can go easily and come and all that. All that could be advantageous. But if God did not send you to America, no miracle. You take yourself to Russia without God, you rush back. Take yourself to Germany without God, you jam it. Take yourself to England, you can't be glad. In England, you can't be glad. It's better to stay in Chica that God kept you than to go to Chicago. <laughs> that God did not send you to. They look funny, but they are real. I've seen many people all around the world I met a man in the UK, 60 years old, a professional with a professional title in front of his name. He had been in the UK for over 30 years. And he said to me, Pastor, I can't go home. Why? I have nothing to show here for 30 years of living here and nothing to show at home. So I'm ashamed to return home. Nothing there, nothing here. Years wasted. Follow God's plan. If God did not ask you to start a church and you started, you might be the only member. Or you turned in, turn into a native doctor to get more members. Native doctor wearing coat. Don't say my friend started a hospital and he's making money. If you start a hospital, God didn't ask you to start. You may be the first patient from hypertension. The fact that you are in Abuja does not mean you are to pursue contract like everybody is pursuing. Find out where God has positioned you. Find out your placement. Find out. Am I communicating at all? I'm not envying nobody. All I want is to fulfill my assignment on it. Everything God wants me to be is what I want to be. Nobody's becoming what they will become threatens me. Because the lion is a lion. It's an abomination for lion to desire to be a tiger. Or for the eagle to desire to be something else. And all of them are uniquely unique. Somebody say it loud, amen. It is the power of the plan of God. The power of the purpose of God. That makes you to be a barrier breaker. Anywhere you are positioned where God wants you to be. No force of hell can shift you. Is it not a mystery to you that this kind of place will be located on this kind of place? How? The answer, God. Uh, 
the power of what? Divine plan and purpose. Number two is the power of divine direction. What is the difference? If, if the purpose says, I am, I am a doctor. The direction says, practice in Lagos. Practice in Abuja. Or the UK. Or the US. The purpose is the general thing. The direction is the specific ones. I'm talking about the continuous hearings. The continuous understandings. It is my purpose to do what I'm doing now. But I need to find out the person I'm thinking of inviting as a guest minister. Is that is it correct? Am I okay? I remember one time I was going to invite someone. I was already very excited. Oh, so and so. Very, very excited. All that I needed was one revelation. God gave me one dream in the night, in night vision. And what I saw. Oh. Okay. Not now. Maybe not ever. Am I communicating? Psalm 29 verse 1. Let's read Psalm 29 verse 1. All the way to verse 3. He said, give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. See, barrier breaking by the voice of the Lord. It was by one direction that God gave to Moses that the Red Sea parted. He said, take your rod. And as he lifted his rod, God brought an east wind. He gave direction also to Joshua and the people. Just direction. From this moment I speak to somebody. God will speak to you. Even if it is by a dream. By whatever means God will speak to you. To know his mind for your next level. That direction is coming your way. Say that amen like a believer. Say that amen like a believer. Say that louder believers. Amen. The power. Maybe to, 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 to make it less, com to, to make it easy for you, call it the, the power of divine direction in bracket, the power of the voice of God. Knowing what God wants you to do per time. It breaks obstacles. If God did not send you into, an, into oil and gas, and you decided to go into oil and gas. <laughs> it might become a challenging oil and gas. Where the heat of frustration can boil you like the oil. Don't say that my closest friend joined politics and say, I want to join politics. If God doesn't send you there, you might become an area boy right there. Because the kind of politics in our country today is not different from Agbero boys. Jongu, Jongu. Jungle. Ballot balls is on the floor. Tattered. Some with taking host. All manner of primordial 
prim primitive stone age, prehistoric operation. <laughs> Don't branch there. But if God say move, no devil can stop you. No power can stop you. No force of hell can stop you. Somebody shout the loudest, amen. amen. Finally, the power of praise. The shout of praise. Somebody give the Lord a big shout of praise. A louder shout of praise. The loud most shout of praise. A bigger, bigger shout of praise. Shout it again. Shout it louder. Shout it loudest. Don't forget this for as long as you live. Until your mouth is closed, your case is not closed. If your mouth is not closed, as far as praise is concerned, your case is never closed. Somebody give a shout of praise. Look at somebody by your side say, my mouth cannot be closed. Listen to this. Until you run out of praise, you never run out of victory. Until you run out of praise, you never run out of openings. Because praise brought down the wall of Jericho. Praise opened the prison for Paul and Silas. That is why the devil attacks your praise. He attacks your celebration. He attacks your excitement. Because if he closes your mouth, he has closed your door and closed your destiny and closed your case. But today, there are some people who are going to praise. Anyone there like that? You will jump up with a loud shout of victory.